So I've just finished making the PDF that I'm going to be putting up for sale uh, for the Cyber Weekend. And I was going to do it live and then I thought no because I'm going to have to stop for the kids for lunch and all the rest of it, which I did. So instead what I'm going to do is put all of this together into a video and then take you guys along with making your very first PDF that you can put up for sale this weekend. So I'll take you through Canva and how it works and how I piece mine together and we'll go from there and enjoy. Okay guys, welcome along. Today we are going to be making a PDF. This could be your very first uh, paid product offering that you might be able to put out for Cyber Weekend, which is part of why I'm making it today because we're coming up to Cyber Weekend 2024. And I'm going to go through making the entire product that I'm going to be selling. Now I was going to do this live, but the kids are home and I'm going to have to stop for lunch soon and things like that. So I thought, well, I'll just get it all recorded as is, stick it all together. So it might be a bit of a long video, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing and how I do it and how long it takes me. So yeah, it's uh, quarter to 12 now and we'll see how we go. So the first thing that you're going to need is a free program. If you haven't heard of it, I'm sure you probably have, but it's called canva.com. So we'll head over to Canva. And as you can see, I make a ton of stuff for both myself and my clients. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start by creating a design. Now, the beautiful thing is if I come up here, there's the create a design. Now, by the way, Canva has both a paid plan and a free plan. Today, I'm just going to be using the free plan because that's what I've got access to. So we're going to create a design in here. And all you're going to do is type in A4 at the top. And it's going to say, do you want to do it in portrait or do you want to do it in landscape? So for most of us, we're going to be doing it in portrait. If you want to do it in landscape, you know, if you've got something that you need spreadsheets in or something like that, then Landscape might be a better, oh sorry, landscape might be a better option for you, but otherwise we'll just go into a full portrait. Now, the super cool thing about Canva is that you've actually got a million templates available. Um, if it's got a little crown, that means it's a pro one, which means that you do have to pay. Um, but other than that, you can kind of scroll down and there's, there's just so many options. So... I know that I'm not going to be using any of these because I personally already have some stuff. I already have like my setup set up, so I've got evil um, PDFs that I've already created. So I'm going to be using the same things that I've created. Sorry, we'll wait for the siren to go past. So if you wanted to go pro, I mean, if you just have a quick look at this one for example if you click in it then you've got like an entire book already made up and obviously you guys can go into Canva yourselves because it's free so you can go in have a click around and until you click the like download button that's when you're going to be prompted to pay for it if you need to pay for it um, but if you're only using free stuff uh, then it doesn't really matter you don't have to pay anything but this is really useful. So somebody has already taken the time to make up this ebook down here on the side. And then we have more like this. So you've got course workbooks or product catalogs or anything. So it's really quite useful. Um, and as I said, if you're looking for, see this one is completely free. Like that's a really nice setup. And the thing is you can go in and edit any of this that you want to. So if you're like, oh, that font, for example, isn't my font, isn't the font that I would personally use. You just click into it and all you're going to do is come in here and just click it and go, oh, actually, I want a different font. I'm going to use that one instead. And then you're done. So it's really easy to come in and then all you do if you get one of these is go add page and then back into design and you'll come back up. Sorry, we'll just wait for the siren to go past. Uh, and you can just click on the plus and it adds the next one and you can carry on and then if you move things around see that's a photo so you could go into down here you've got elements and then you can go into photos and then these are ones that um, 
Canva provides, again, most of them are for free, and then you've got paid ones as well. So if you wanted to, say, replace it with this photo here, all you do is drag it and drop it in, and it replaces it. Oops, not quite like that. Control Z. Um, the, like, cut and paste, if you know all the shortcut keys, or Control Z to go backwards. Um, Control C, cuts. Control V, pastes. So, uh, let's see, that's a bit better. There we go. And then you drop it in and it's easily done. So you could literally just pick any one of these and then do them. Um, you might find that there's, oh no, that one is an actual photo. Occasionally they will have like an extra layer over the top because this is quite dark. So I thought, oh, maybe there's an extra layer, but apparently not. So yeah, just have a play around. It's really, really super simple. Um, but for me, I'm going to get into what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, so I will just take out these ones and I will get started. Uh, so I'm just going to open up another Canva in another tab because as I said I already have other things that are part of my brand that I normally use. So that way I can just take across my uh, main and pieces and I can throw them in there and that way I've got my colors that are going to come up I've got my fonts that I've already got coming up so but once again you guys can do anything like once you put it in there if you just come in and move things around you can just you grab it you move it you stick it there it's it's truly super duper simple um, if you guys want some really cool if, if this is the first time you've done it you can get font pairings so when you put fonts together some look better than others and you don't want to have like a bazillion different types of fonts so you might say pick a heading font um, an extra font and a uh, copy font so that's the majority of so that's where you'd use your Times New Roman or your railway or something like that if you're interested in finding out really good font pairings just head over to Pinterest Pinterest and type in fonts or font pairings there's so many and uh, you could even probably type in something like font pairings for Canva. So once again, when you start going into the fonts, if you click up here, this is where the fonts are, and it just comes up. And once again, you've got some that are part of the premium stuff. Um, and then there's a, a million that you can use. So it's fantastic. And you can upload your own. Um, yeah, so you're really only limited by your own imagination, but don't feel like it has to be overwhelming because it's really truly not. So I'm gonna get into making mine today and how I make mine, uh, and you guys can just follow along if you want to and see what I get up to, and like I said, we'll make it as simple as possible. So today my product is actually going to be one about um, no studio needed. So, uh, the ultimate guide to photography at home for newbie photographers. So, I went around to a friend's place a couple of days ago, and she has an older house, and it's got the dark wood on the walls. So, the place is quite dark. It's an older building, um, but she has this fabulous um, big window on the side. So, there's actually heaps of room in the lounge but the problem is because there's so much light there's heaps of light coming in but it's kind of all being absorbed by the darkness and so I said to her this could be really easily solved if you just stick up um, some backdrops like this uh, just some white ones hang some white sheets and all of a sudden you're gonna get a lot more light bouncing around in this room and you'll be able to set something up because she just had her, her kitchen table right in front of the window it was fabulous perfect setup to be doing that if we can just get a bit more light bouncing in but so many people don't realize that actually you don't need a huge space for one and for two you can do some really simple um, like alterations around your house you can get some you just pin up some white sheets like even if you go down to the second hand shop you can get sheets or like even predominantly white if they're not going to be in shot then it doesn't matter if you get like a set of old grandma ones where they're white but they've got like little itty bitty flowers all over them as long as it's predominantly white and it's going to reflect 
the light um, I do tend to find so our place uh, we have renovated but when we were first in here we had orange concrete floors and the color cast that came up off the orange floors made it so that every photo I took had like an orange tint to it which was really frustrating so you can solve you can solve that but you just need to put down like white sheets on the floor and you'll even notice that if you look at a white house in the Sun versus say a cream or a yellow house even though they're light colors they tend to absorb the light more whereas the light the white is actually fully reflective so keep that in mind that when you're looking for stuff you are actually looking for white white as much as you can so that it will reflect the light around so just something to keep in in the back of your mind anyway that's what I'm going to be creating today because there like I said there's I think there's a lot of people that want um, want to be able to do stuff at home and just don't know how to use the space properly so I'm gonna start making this and you guys can just follow along with me and if I don't have anything interesting to say particularly I might speed it up or something but you can see what I'm up to so for me the first thing I like to do is set up like my title page and and the, the basic layout and then I go through and start adding stuff so um, let me see another good resource is pixels and for when you're starting free the good thing about free stock sites free stock photography sites is that they do have some really good photos which is excellent when you're starting out the problem with free stock sites is that they do tend to be more limited and so if you've got a blog for instance and you're using photos all the time and it's all about the same topic I do tend to find there's not the diversity of images that the paid stock sites have if that makes sense but pixels is a great place to start so I'm just going to type in home studio and see what I come up with um, kind of cool and that's kind of what I'm after so download any more like that and so you've got some in here sponsored by iStock that are clearly on a totally different level than a lot of these others There are some very, very awesome, clever people out there. Ah, that's really cool. I kind of wanted something a little, not messier, but something that reflects more people's crazy spaces. Um, no, I don't want my stock. That's okay, we'll go back. Okay. Let's start with that one uh, and all you need to do is open your uh, open your um, downloads and just pull it and drop it and then it gets added to uh, your uploads which is this little button here so if I click in there these are pictures and things that I've uploaded to put into everything that I'm doing so we'll just go back to there and slip that around and see how all of a sudden I'm missing a couple of bits all you need to do is click on there and you click position and that one goes to the back so and that makes it easy and I can see it all so just make sure that you cover the entire like canvas as it is uh, you guys can kind of do it whichever way you want to like 
in the sense of if you want to put the information in first and then make it pretty or if you want to make it pretty first and then add the information I like to kind of get the basic setup of what I want it to look like um, and that way when I put the other stuff in then I've already got sort of where it's going to be blocked into essentially so I really want to give this I really want to give this a better title and I don't quite know and I kind of want to make this bigger so it's if you press uh, just a quick note if you press uh, enter then obviously it brings it down to the next one and you've got two ways to make your fonts bigger or smaller you can drag out the corner which will make it bigger or you can come up here and increase or decrease the font size or if you click into it you can type in whatever size you want to or pick from any of their presets so you can kind of play around with it however you want to um, and you can also play around with if I'm like meh that space in between them is a bit too big or something you can come up to spacing and control your line spacing so you could make it bigger or smaller and that way it just sort of sits a little bit better and I'm missing my here we go I'm just gonna steal it from that one there we go um, now I've got my logo made up but you can make up your own logo if you don't have one for example or you don't have to it's really up to you guys uh, but everything that you upload you can actually put into like if I go down to red in the wall it's actually there my logo if I click on that then it comes up I just am so used to just cutting and pasting from other ones that's the way I do it now but you can literally go into your uploads and it will be there and you can create folders uh, for projects that you do and things and name them so that one's my red in the wall photography I need to like come in and tidy up my canva it's it's a pretty big mess in here anyway so I'm gonna leave that there I haven't quite figured out I haven't quite figured out how I want to title this so that's the basics and then I'm gonna move on to the next page now you can drag and drop in your text anywhere you want to you want to add a heading or you just want to add a little bit of body text or as you can see down here they've got a whole bunch here as well like yeah could do that and then move it up there and turn that into a title um, if they're grouped it'll give you the option to ungroup or group certain things so in other words if you're like eh I really like it when they're both like that I'm happy I'm probably going to use them more than once just choose both of them and group them and then when you move that around you're actually moving both of them around together so if you've got a specific layout that you really like and you want to keep them together then you have that option but yeah um, I'm not going to do it that way because as I said I like stealing from my old ones uh, so I'm just going to come in here and copy and paste now as I said you can also come into design right so I've been in design before and I have come in and and used some of the ones that they have in here I'm trying to find one that I've used they're just such a useful starting point um, and you can go into templates or styles so you know you could click through and find combinations that you like and all of a sudden it does it which I don't want I'm gonna press Control Z so you can apply to all pages and things like that so I might want to change it to that um, or not so that's quite interesting too because they're actually already coming up with stuff for you and you can see all if you want to go back combinations see all so you can get an idea of if you're like ah oh, I really love those colors in that or I like that color 
all of a sudden you've got a whole nother color set up like it's it's actually quite amazing what you can do I actually really like that orange um anyway I am going to carry on with what I have set up and we will go from there I always like to have a little introductory page because I think it's really um, it's nice to read I quite like reading other people's introductory page just as a hi welcome along this is what we're up to um, if you have any questions and let's do this basically so I will be updating this shortly uh, and basically I'm just gonna get into it so I went into Gemini the other day so I'm gonna pop back over to Gemini and I'll show you what I asked for Gemini home photography guide that's what it was I said good morning Gemini I've got an idea but I'd love for you to finesse it for me I wanted to make a PDF photography guide on the topic of how to take photos at home as a new photographer that basically talks about how to find good lighting for if you're wanting to do product photography or small-scale stock photography and especially if your house is cluttered and you don't know where to do it or for portraiture basically any kind of photography you want to do at home as a newbie but don't know where to start when you don't have a dedicated studio space I need some really good title ideas for it and could you also give me the pain points of this kind of newbie photographer I think I understand the problem I'm trying to solve but can you articulate it better for me so this is quite useful I don't know about you guys but sometimes when I'm doing this it's right when my brain is on fire other days I'm trying to get something done last thing at night or first thing in the morning and my brain's a bit foggy so being able to have Gemini to articulate something for me better or answer a quick question is really really useful um, and also here's the other thing while Gemini is really useful as is like chat GPT or any of the language models that you want to use they are really useful but how do I say it like it's good if you really need to know what you're talking about first so that you can ask it to do what you need it to do but then you can double check it I'm just recording guys thank you so and then obviously you've got to pick something that's useful to you so it was coming up with some PDF uh, title ideas transform your home into a photography studio um, I, I really wanted something that was that was more like you know no studio needed I really like that idea so but going through here unleashing your photography potential at home from clutter to creativity some of these are really really useful and even if you don't end up using them as titles uh, like I could use them as chapter titles or page titles within the document for instance and uh, the pain points everything here was basically what I had already thought of myself but I kind of hadn't thought of the fear of failure one so new photographers may feel overwhelmed and intimidated by the technical aspects of photography leading to a lack of confidence the problem you're trying to solve is to empower beginner photographers to create high quality images within the confines of their own homes regardless of their budget or living situation your guide will provide them with practical tips and techniques to overcome common challenges and achieve professional looking results that's that's exactly what i needed to articulate and just did not have the brain power to do that the other day so that was awesome and then i said i wanted to turn this into a 17 dollar PDF for purchase what would be any key topics that you would suggest I include so understanding natural light creating a minimalist black background setting up your home studio styling and composition editing and post-processing and then some additional <coughs> sorry some additional tips now I'm including all this stuff because if you want to create something how do I put this a lot of people put a lot of effort into things I, I don't want to downplay effort but I have noticed that effort doesn't always equal sales or views or anything like that so 
while you are providing value and you do want to provide value it's all about getting the information across so in other words if you can get AI to basically be a sounding board like you would think about it this way you wouldn't think twice about getting a like a business mentor and then going to the business mentor and going oh, I've kind of got these ideas for something I'd like to sell really love your input and then the business mentor would come along and go those ideas are awesome if I were you I would make sure that I'd include this or that or the next thing and what do you think that the key pain points are of your target audience so you kind of do need to have some idea of what you want to ask AI to be able to get the results that you want to get so asking questions like what are the pain points of my audience around this topic is a really excellent way to actually figure out how to word things to make sure that you really are solving the problems that they need solved anyway I'm gonna get into it because it's already quarter past 12 and otherwise this is gonna take me forever so and I promised that you know we'd get this done in a decent amount of time so I'm gonna pop back over I'm gonna pull Gemini onto my other screen so I can cut and paste anything I need to and I am gonna start it here with Lights, camera, home studio. I'm gonna pop that in there. I've just cut this. I've literally just cut this little bit straight from um straight from Gemini. Photograph, lights, camera, home studio. Okay, so you can either come into here again into Pixels or the other one is Unsplash. Unsplash, I really love it. Has some, I mean, look how gorgeous some of these are. So I'm going to use some of my own photos because as much as I can, I try and use my own photos within my own stuff. So Photography, 2024. That and that. Oh, and if you want to position things nicely, you can align elements. I was about to point at the screen and go see. Um, see here how the elements aren't quite lined up you can click on line them up to the top and now they're perfectly in line and um yeah because you can see my screen as well so that makes it really nice and i am just going to okay so yeah i do so many things by autopilot these days if you click on it you have the option to see this little plus button duplicate so if I push this I get a second one right or I can delete it or or the other option is that you press alt if you click on it press alt and then left click again and drag you've got another one which is what I did originally so oops now I've deleted that out the middle did that no it's gone um, I'm just gonna write hey actually that's always a good start for me and uh, the other thing is you can again oh look if I go purple you can make it go purple uh, it's got a little movement if you hover over that it goes purple and you can drag it around I keep going to point I keep going to point to the screen to show you things uh, see the little black numbers underneath that's how many degrees so if you want it straight which you can totally have it straight <laughs> then you can or you just click on the image once whatever it is I can do it with any of them it comes up with this little button um, and you can twist it any way you want to so it's quite a lot of fun uh, 
and if you move things around you'll notice that I have all these pink lines coming up so that for me is always a good um, I try and keep most of what I write within that box and I just sort of tuck it to the side um, and that leaves a nice little bit of white space around the edges so and if you put something in the center let's say I want to make sure this is absolutely centered if I move it around see there's that solid pink line down the middle that means that the absolute center so I'm aligning that perfectly with absolute center so uh, and if I want to move it up and down see how it's now coming up with the 12.8 that means that between whatever it is that I'm clicking on and what's above it and what's below it it's telling me that it's perfectly aligned this is 12.8 points here and there's 12.8 points here so which means that it's just going to look a bit, little bit nicer when you take that little bit extra time to align something correctly so uh, introduction done now I'm going to add a page um, and I am going to what am I going to do first uh, I'm going to pop back over to here because I have uh, no not that one um, I'm going to open another Canva I already have some other stuff that I've half made so I quite like this one as a again I actually found this I found this exact thing in um, I found this layout in one of the designs so again by going into the designs and having a look through you can just pick whichever pages you want to if you choose to and then I've done what I wanted to so if you come here and just grab the whole lot um, control copy control C is control copy and then come and click anywhere in here and just go here look if I take it out I just go control V and it puts it in the exact same position as well which is quite useful so now I can just come through and change whatever I want to um, I'm going to take a break for a few minutes. Okay, back after lunch break. So, okay. So, actually, I don't really like that page. So, I'm going to delete that page, which is quite useful. So, one, two, but I do want something almost like this. I'm going to copy that page and page V. What I want is right so I'm going to start here with the title start where you are because I think that's a big pain point for people that are going to be buying this book is that they're going to be like, ah, it's easy, you've got it easier, you've got something set up, that kind of stuff. And I want to share that half the time my house is in a crazy chaotic mess. Um, not that I'm proud of that. <laughs> but point being is that I think it needs to be relatable to people that they can see what you can start with and what you can end up with. So that's basically where I'm going to go with this page so I'm going to get that done also if you're wondering where I'm getting these uh, frames from if we go over there go into elements and type up frame and you'll get these frames so you can put in a circle photo if you wanted so if I wanted to put a circle there and then drag any photo onto it that I wanted to drag that in then it comes out as a circle so 
whichever one you want to you can pop in there so and that just acts as a frame so literally whichever photo you drag in is what's going to be there so I want to come down and just kind of showcase my chaos start where you are that's the other thing you can just close Canva there is no save so whatever you've done you just close it and it auto saves and then when you go to the Canva main page like once you've logged in obviously you can see that I'm logged in up here then all you do is you come back down and here's my book I haven't renamed it yet so also you can name things up the top here so when you click into it I'm gonna title this no studio needed guide So the first page I'm going to start with, I've done a start where you are because I think that's really important to know. And then I want to create a, basically a guide to what you actually need. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and go, grab that. Oh, also a quick note if you double click on the photo it will come up with actually how much bigger it is than the space that you have available so then it's up to you how you want to do it so you can move things around There's so, many, there's so many cool little bits and pieces you can actually use under the elements section. So for instance, I'm going to look up an arrow, but you could literally look up anything. There's flowers and oh, you name it, you can find it under elements. So shapes, I'm going to go into see all. And I just want something simple like that. Make it a bit smaller, turn it around. I 
and you can flip things. So if you come up here, yay, flip it around and it just fits.
And just before we finish up, obviously I need to show you guys how to download it and get it out of Canva. It's really easy. You go up to the share button up here and there's a download button. So you click download and what you want to do is change the file type to a PDF standard. Uh, make sure that all pages are connected and then just click download. And it will start downloading down here and you'll see it to start. You'll, you'll see it start downloading. So if you don't see it start downloading, you can just redo the process. Rare occasions, Canva's like, I'm sorry, what did you want me to do again? So yeah, that's fine. You can just redo it, download it. And if you make any changes, um, you can re-download it again. Now if it comes up with something saying, oh, you're using a paid item, you can either choose to pay for the paid item or it, I'm pretty sure it shows you a graphic of the graphic that is paid that you're using. So you can always go through and delete that one and replace it if you want to. So yeah. Okay guys, well that was it. So I hope that you learned something and I hope that it wasn't too scary. And I hope that you're gonna put something together and if you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments and I promise I will try and get back to each of you as soon as possible, because I know this is quite time sensitive. And other than that, I'm going to be uploading this and some photos to my website tomorrow to sell to get ready for Cyber Weekend. So if you want to come along and I will figure that out and show you that tomorrow as well, then that'll be great. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.